this is the first time I've done a night video. <laughs> so it's late, it's dark, and so I am here down in my makeshift office, <laughs> aka partly my son's room, and I want to talk about this topic that just surfaced today. And you guys, this is so interesting because a few weeks ago, I had this thought that I needed to go back to my old blog, back into the archives, and revisit some of those topics and put them into videos. So I know I talked about this in my last video. Well, anyways, a couple of weeks ago, I went through my website and I wondered what should be a topic I should revisit first, because there's a few really good ones. And I wondered what should I do first and it just kept coming to mind that I needed to talk about an article I wrote on February 7th of 2014 and it was titled The Real Face of Joseph Smith the Prophet. You guys this was really interesting to me because I had come across this photograph that never made the news. In fact, as far as my knowledge goes today, it still has not made the news. And I just had this strong feeling I needed to revisit this article, so I wrote it down, and I've been going through it this week, getting ready to do this video. And today, while I was at the store, my husband texted me, and he said, did you see this? And he sent me this link right here to this article in the Salt Lake Tribune, and it's titled, At Long Last, A Photo of Mormon Founder Joseph Smith Emerges. And there it is, there's this photo. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is so ironic. In fact, I don't believe in coincidences. And so I said to my husband, I texted him back, and I said, I was just about to make a video about the real face of Joseph Smith this week. <laughs> I said, how weird that you sent this to me. And I took that as a sign that I needed to do the video tonight. <laughs> and my husband had no idea. He had no idea I had ever written this article. He had no idea that I was about to make a video about it. So this is really strange, you guys. And so let's get into it. Let's talk about it. So first, I want to go over to my blog and let's start there. And then let's end with this article that came out today. And then I'd love to hear your thoughts. I want to know what you think. Let's just go ahead and dive in. Okay, so I wrote, I came across this daguerreotype that very well could be the only picture we have of the Prophet Joseph Smith. I have seen other photos believed to be of the Prophet Joseph Smith, but to me, they look nothing like the death mask or the paintings. This picture, at first glance, I truly felt it was him. It's an original photo of an unknown honorable man from New York about 1844. So I linked the blog where I found this picture. And I said, the author of the blog describes where the picture came from. He says, one fateful day, a curious book was placed in my hands. It was a Brazilian book about a museum exhibition of early daguerreotypes. Daguerreotypes were an early type of photograph. I flipped through the pages to get a feel for the book, which had, of course, lots of pictures. Before I started writing my summary of its contents, I admit the old pictures were interesting to look at, and I may have taken more time than I should have going through each and every page instead of skipping here and there but it turned out to be just the thing I needed to do. I turned a page and suddenly was face to face with the strangest daguerreotype I had ever seen. Unlike the other pictures, which were placed several to a page and had very short text descriptions, this particular daguerreotype was placed on the entire left-hand page and the author of the book used the entire opposite page to write about it. It was obvious that this daguerreotype was considered worthy of more notice than the others. And it did stand out for it was colorized and set into a frame with a hinged cover so that it could be closed and carried around and then flipped open to show people. But the most startling aspect of it was that it appeared to be Joseph Smith himself. I tried my best to read the Portuguese text using my knowledge of Spanish and determined that the daguerreotype was acquired from New York in 1844, but nothing else was known about it or its subject. The author of the book proceeded to analyze the pose, dress, and face of the man 
and the exquisite sharpness and quality of the daguerreotype, it was the best preserved of all those in the book, plus the way it was framed, etc. And he came to the conclusion that the man must have thought he was something really special and had a commanding look about him. Perhaps he was a congressman or someone else in authority. So he eventually tracks down the man who bought the photo. And then he writes, Mr. Mora has said that he acquired the daguerreotype from the Armory Show in New York City in 1966. He paid five or $10 for it. He looked it over himself, but did not see any maker's marks on it. By comparison with other daguerreotypes and based on the hairstyle, color, suit, etc., he put it at circa 1845. As he acquired it from New York City, it is listed as New York circa 1845. He also has confirmed that it is an original daguerreotype, not a copy. Even more stunning, he writes, a couple of days ago, I stumbled upon a blog post entitled, Is This Joseph Smith? which contains a quote by historian Will Bagley, who said, quote, Smith recorded having his picture taken in 1844. Now, I wasn't aware that Joseph Smith wrote down that he got his picture taken in 1844. I find the fact that the daguerreotype I saw came out of New York in 1844 to be awfully coincidental. It turns out that he was unsuccessful at generating any interest from church leadership to investigate the picture. So I ended the article by saying that it turns out that he was unsuccessful at generating any interest from church leadership to investigate the picture. And I wrote, I'd like to know what you think. I think it looks 100% like Joseph Smith's death mask. Okay, so are you ready to see this? <laughs> so before I read this article, you can see it right here. You can follow me as I scroll down through this. You can see right there this photograph right next to this painting that we have by Alvin Giddens. Right below that, you see the original forensic bust that was sculpted by DJ Bodden in 1981. So you look at this and you just, you see the similarities. Look at the nose, the mouth, you guys, the way the lips are shaped, the chin, the cheekbones, the hairline. It's parted on the right. See that right there? The way that it's combed over, it's just so similar. The eyebrows, the shape of the eyes, all of it. To me, it looked exactly like him. And then down here, you see a side-by-side -side comparison of the death mask with a sketch that was drawn based on this death mask. So you see a couple of different angles of his face. And then scrolling down, there it is again, a side-by-side -side comparison of the death mask and this photograph. And to me, it looks like the same person. And this photo on the right is two death masks. It's Joseph next to his brother, Hiram. So I was convinced way back in 2014 that this was it. This was a photograph that was just out there and still to this day, no one has connected this photograph with the person in it. And other than the man who saw this and made that comparison, I haven't heard anyone else mention this photograph. Now, right around the time I wrote this article, I came across this photograph because this photograph had made the news. And it was also believed to be the first photograph and only photograph we know of taken of Joseph Smith. So I saw this and I didn't see any resemblance whatsoever. I did not feel that this was him, but a lot of people did and it made the news. So according to this article in LDS Living, and I'm wondering if they came across my blog post, which referenced this man and his photograph. So their article is called, Do Photographs of the Prophet Joseph Smith Exist? And this was in 2017. It's says, a few years ago, I was in Nauvoo when S. Michael Tracy, author of the book, Millions Shall Know Brother Joseph Again, gave a PowerPoint presentation on a possible photograph of Joseph Smith that had surfaced within the community of Christ. In the presentation, S. Michael Tracy laid out numerous points of study that had gone into the photograph to determine its authenticity. Neither the community of Christ nor a team of LDS scholars have been able to determine for certain that the man in the daguerreotype is Joseph Smith. And further down, they show that picture on my blog post and they wrote, 
Joseph Smith's doppelganger. And then they bring up this photograph right here, which says there's a claim that this photo right here is Brigham Young and Joseph Smith standing side by side. And I'm not seeing it. <laughs> um, further down, there's another photo right here. And the author writes, I was recently made aware of yet another photograph. At first glance, I was very nearly convinced that it was Joseph Smith. But after doing some research, I learned that it is also believed to be a photograph of Alexander Hugh Holmes Stewart, a man who served as United States Secretary of the Interior between 1850 and 1853. That aside, there are a number of people who sincerely believe that this is indeed a photograph of the Prophet. And while the demeanor of the man in this photograph intrigues me more than the others, why is Stuart etched in the right hand corner? So as you can see, it says Stuart. Okay, so let those photographs marinate for a little bit. <laughs> now we're gonna switch over to today's article that came out in the Salt Lake Tribune titled, At Long Last, A Photo of Mormon Founder Joseph Smith Emerges. It says, treasured daguerreotype was found in a descendant's locket. Utah-based LDS Church welcomes the news, but urges caution until the image can be further authenticated. So there it is. Look at that side by side. And of course, this is a painting of Joseph Smith on the left. But even if you compare the painting to the photograph, to me, the nostrils look different. The width between the nose and the lips right here, it looks different to me. The mouth looks different, the lips look different. I just see this little bulge right here on the top lip and I don't see that over here. The chin has some similarities. The eyebrows to me look different. I feel like the eyebrows in the oil painting are thicker, more noticeable, and then over here they're kind of thinner and his eyes are smaller and kind of more sunken in. The man in this photo has his hairline parted on his left, but our right, so he parts his hair on the left side. This painting of Joseph Smith, his hair is parted down the center. And then this daguerreotype that I shared in my blog post, he parts his hair on the right, which is our left looking at it, but it's his right. So this man parts his hair on the right. And if you look at this bust in my blog post, Joseph's hair is parted on the right, just like in this daguerreotype. And this was based on his death mask but the man in this photo appears to have his hair parted on the left. But again, I feel like this daguerreotype really matches the death mask and the bust. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. So now let's go ahead and read this article that emerged today. It says, the historian's first impression was that the man staring at him from the 1844 metal daguerreotype was not the founder of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Joseph Smith, to Lachlan McKay, an apostle with the Community of Christ, formerly the Reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and Smith's great-great-great-grandson, the image did not seem to match the view of the prophet depicted in an 1842 oil portrait that had been circulating since the 19th century. The eyes were more sunken than in the painting, the eyebrows were more rounded, and the lips less full. Those were the exact three things that I noticed. <laughs> so I'm just reading through this article right now for the first time as I'm doing this video, and it's interesting that an apostle in the community of Christ noticed the exact same three things that I did about this photo when you compare it to the painting done in 1842. So this photo is supposed to be from 1844, which would just have been a couple years later. And then same with the other daguerreotype that I wrote about in my blog post, it was also from 1844. And I feel like that is very similar to the oil painting. After an exhaustive 18 months of research and analysis, However, McKay is convinced it is the first known picture of the man who said he saw God and Jesus in a New York woods as a boy. Quote, this isn't surprising since Emma Smith herself, Smith's wife, 
didn't think the portrait was a good likeness of her husband, McKay said in an interview from his home in Nauvoo, Illinois, and that a good portrait of him couldn't be painted because his countenance was changing all the time. Larson, who joined the Utah-based church in the past decade, believed the photo was his great-great-grandfather the instant he saw it, peeking out from a locket that had been passed down to him from his great-grandfather, Joseph Smith III, the son of Joseph Smith the prophet, who helped found what is now the Community of Christ and became its first president. I just knew it was Joseph, Larson said this week. I looked at it for an hour or so with my wife. It was an emotional moment. It was also a spiritual confirmation of a mystical experience Larson said that he had in the Kirtland Temple shortly before converting. I knew Joseph was with me. I felt his spirit, he said. I saw him. Larson believes the timing is right for this photo to be published, he said. And I believe Joseph knows that too. Here's a picture of the photo in the locket. I do have to say this man has amazing eyes and when you look into these eyes you just feel that he knows something or that he's seen something so I think that's pretty cool okay further on down based on 19th century newspaper quotes and correspondence between LDS and our LDS members historians and the Smith family members long believed that there was a photograph of Smith before his June 27th, 1844 slaying, but none had ever been found until 2020. That was when Larson dug into a trunk of artifacts that he had inherited from his mother, Lois Smith Larson, Joseph Smith III's granddaughter, after her death in 1992. At that time, he tried to open what he thought was a pocket watch, but the release mechanism was bent and he didn't want to harm it by prying it open. So he stowed it away and forgot about it for 28 years. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Larson's father-in-law died. So he decided to review all the treasures he had. This time he was able to open the trinket, he said, and discovered it was not a watch, but a locket. Because it held a daguerreotype, which is printed on metal, not paper, the visage wasn't immediately obvious until he shined a pen light on its middle. When I did that, the image popped up, he said. It was as sharp as could be. So there it is again, side by side. Larson reached out to McKay, his nephew, who oversees Joseph Smith Historic Sites in Nauvoo, and the two then enlisted the help of Ronald Romig, who has spent three decades studying Smith family visual materials. Together, they examined the photograph using facial recognition software to compare it to the 1842 portrait by David Rogers along with Smith's death mask. Thinking it could be a different Smith relative, which is kind of what I wondered, the team looked for a photographic evidence of any other potential candidates, McKay said, but found none that fit the time frame. They came across a May 1844 advertisement in a Latter-day Saint newspaper for lockets that included daguerreotypes. According to the newly published journal article and multiple photos of prominent Smith women wearing what appeared to be the locket. Those helped answer the key question that was missing or deceptive in Mark Hoffman's murderous forgery case provenance or a record of ownership. To McKay's wife, Christian McKay, president of the John Whitmer Historical Association, who was tasked with looking for those photos, the role of women proved significant. What makes the locket compelling to me is that it was apparently passed down through the women in the family, she said. Emma was incredibly protective of Joseph's image and not wanting it to be associated with polygamy. When someone asked to copy the Rogers portrait of Joseph, she declined and kept the portrait in her bedroom out of public view. The historian believes Emma handed down the daguerreotype through the women because they wouldn't be asked about it, Christian McKay said, while Joseph III and his brothers would be. For generations, the Smith women hid the locket in plain sight, she said. Frederick Madison Smith had only daughters, which may be why one of them, Lois, ended up with the locket. Still, Latter-day Saint officials urge caution. Quote, every few years, potential donors bring artifacts to the church history library for review, including alleged photographs of the Prophet Joseph Smith, church spokesperson Kelly Smoot said on Thursday. 
Such artifacts are, of course, of great interest to the church. Though it was not mentioned specifically in the journal article, Latter-day Saint historians, archivists, and artifact experts were provided by the item's owner and the article's authors the opportunity to analyze the locket and photo and to review their findings prior to publication. Smoot said in an emailed statement, quote, we concur that the daguerreotype and locket were created of the materials and methods appropriate to the 1840s. However, as nothing is definitively known about the locket's history before 1992, we cannot draw a conclusion about who is pictured in the daguerreotype. The church welcomes the recent publication of the image, she added, and hopes it will prompt the discovery of additional information helpful to determining its authenticity. For most of the 20th century, the 1842 portrait was the closest most believers had to being able to conjure up a picture of Smith. But it was still an artist's interpretation, not a realistic portrayal. I was talking to a retired plastic surgeon who told me nobody looks like that portrait, McKay said. It just doesn't look like a real person. The daguerreotype, on the other hand, captured Smith in a matter of minutes. It likely was taken by convert Lucian Foster, who was the church's branch president in New York City before moving to Nauvoo, just two months before Smith was killed in the Carthage jail. Sometime later, Foster took out an ad in the Nauvoo neighbor in which he boasted of skill in the science of making miniatures. The journal article reported, he affirmed he could make an image of the person as exact as that formed by the mirror that it transferred to. The tiny daguerreotype was inserted into the locket probably before Smith's June 27th death, McKay said, which was then kept by Emma Smith and subsequently remained in Joseph Smith III's family. What happens now? I have a lot of family heirlooms, Larson said, but this one needs to be out there in public for everybody to see. He is friends with senior Latter-day Saint Apostle M. Russell Ballard, a great-great-grandson of Hiram Smith, and has been to Utah many times. My ultimate goal is to see that the daguerreotype, Larson said, ends up in the LDS Church's History Museum in downtown Salt Lake City. Larson pointed to statements made in 2020 by LeGrand R. Curtis Jr., the LDS Church's historian and recorder. When he opened a capstone, capsule from the Salt Lake Temple during the iconic structure's renovation work. Many historians had hoped they would find a photo of the founder in the box, but walked away disappointed. There are no known photographs of Joseph Smith, Curtis told the Church News. If there really was a photograph of Joseph Smith, that would be a find. Indeed, Larson said it is. And finally, you guys, there's this photo. This just popped up when I was editing this video. I was almost finished, and somehow uh, this came across my path. I've never seen it before. There is a YouTube video I'll have linked down below that shares this. I really wasn't able to find it anywhere else online but in this YouTube video. And so let's go ahead and take a look at this photo, and then we're going to sum it all up. The video description of this video says that it's a newfound American daguerreotype that was discovered by a research team based in London, England, which was believed to be an actual historic picture of the Prophet Joseph Smith. But there's really no links or any resources to where this photo came from, how it was discovered, why they believe it could be him. So this is all I could find. So here's part of the video. It shows the death mask, and it shows how it closely matches the proportions of this face right here, of this photograph. There it is, so it lines up the dots and it shows that it's pretty darn close. Now this also is a daguerreotype, but I don't know where it comes from. I couldn't find any information about it. So here you can see when the death mask is aligned over this photo, it matches pretty close. So I don't know, what do you think about this, you guys? I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you've seen this video before, or if you know a little bit of history or background with this photo, I'd love to know where it comes from and why people believe it might be Joseph Smith. So there really wasn't any information with this video. I'd love to hear if anyone has any information. Okay, so I have colorized and animated all five of the photos that people believe could be Joseph Smith. And I wanna see what you think. Here is the first photo. It was donated by the Library of Congress in 1844, shortly after the Prophet's martyrdom. 
The photographer was traveling in Nauvoo in 1844, and several BYU professors were unable to rule out that this image was Joseph Smith. Photo number two. This was donated by one of Joseph Smith's relatives and believed to be taken around 1839. Photo number three. This is from one of Joseph Smith's descendants and this is the picture that was found in the locket. And on to photo number four. This was picked up by an AI program and the Artificial Intelligence Program identified this photo to be that of Joseph Smith. And last is a photo of a very prominent man who lived in New York. This was taken in 1844. Here it is again, slightly enhanced and with a little bit of color. And I have to say with this photo, it looks as though this man is very prominent. He's very confident the way that he holds himself together seems as though he's very much a leader. Now it looks very different from this blown up version. I was able to take the tiny photo online and enhance it and then do an animation. It looks very different from this black and white copy of the photo. So same photo, one is just a black and white copy, but yet they almost look like two different people. Okay, so I wanna hear what you think what are your thoughts? What are your feelings? I would love to be able to take these daguerreotypes and put them into a facial recognition software and see which one comes up the closest to the death mask. I think that would be really fascinating. But I think here, in addition to just analyzing it with your own eyes and internalizing what you see, I think you really have to consider how you feel. So when you look at these different photographs, how do they make you feel? Which one gives you a stronger feeling that it might be the Prophet Joseph Smith? Aside from the stories, aside from the theories, just based alone on looking at these photographs, which one do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts about this. Again, the timing with planning on already doing this video this week and then this article surfacing today from the Salt Lake Tribune and numerous people reaching out to me saying, have you seen this? Not knowing that I was in the midst of preparing a video on this very topic. <laughs> but of course, this was a new photo to add to the story. So comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And either way, I think what we can conclude from this is that everybody is very interested in seeing a real picture, a real photograph of the Prophet Joseph Smith. Aside from the death mask and the oil painting and the bust, we all would love to see a photograph that we know that can be authenticated that it is indeed him. And maybe that time is getting closer and closer to when that will be authenticated. It's interesting that all this is surfacing again. We recently had the 200 year anniversary of the restoration of the church and there was a big celebration last year. There was a new proclamation given. There was a Hosanna shout. It was pretty incredible. So it makes you wonder why this is coming up again and this interest to know what the prophet really looked like. It makes you kind of wonder what's around the corner, what's in the near future, and kind of gives a little more meaning to those words in that hymn, millions shall know Brother Joseph again. Anyways, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Feel free to comment below or reach out to me and I'll see you in the next video.